Thank you, Senator Padilla. We're on a roll call, I tell, just to alert the members, and Senator Cruz is next. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General, welcome. Thank you. As you know, as I observed at your confirmation hearing, you had built a long record on the Federal Court of Appeals and a reputation of being relatively nonpartisan. And so I had hopes that your tenure as Attorney General would continue that record. I have to say I'm deeply disappointed in what the last two years have shown. In my judgment, the Department of Justice has been politicized to the greatest extent I've ever seen in this country. And it has done a discredit to the Department of Justice, to the FBI, and the administration of law in this country. Let me start with a simple question. General Garland, is it a federal crime to protest outside of a judge's home with the intent of influencing that judge as to a pending case? Uh, the answer to that is yes, but I also want to at least respond to your characterization of the department, which sure. I vigorously disagree with. I believe the men and women of the department pursue their work every single day in a nonpartisan and an appropriate General way. General Garland, there are thousands of men and women who do that. And I'll tell you, I hear from prosecutors at the Department of Justice. I hear from agents at the FBI who are angry that it is treated as the enforcement arm for the DNC instead of upholding the law in a fair and even-handed manner. So you are right. There are thousands of men and women that are, that are doing the job, but it is the political leadership that you're responsible for. So you just said, yes, it's a crime to protest at the home of a judge. Same goes for jurors, by the way, with the intent of inf influencing a case. But in the wake of the leak of the Dobbs decision, when rioters descended at the homes of six Supreme Court justices, night after night after night, you did nothing. The department did nothing. When extremist groups like Ruth Senas and Jane's Revenge openly organized campaigns of harassment at the homes of justices, you sat on your hands. When these same groups posted online information about where the justices worship, or their home addresses, or where their kids went to school, you again sat on your hands and did nothing. Your failure to act to protect the safety of the justices and their families was an obvious product of political bias. You agree with Roe versus Wade, you disagree with the Dobbs decision, and the Department of Justice under this president was perfectly happy to refuse to enforce the law and allow threats of violence. And as you know, those threats finally materialized with Nicholas Roski, a 26-year-old man from California who traveled across the country, was arrested outside the home of Justice Kavanaugh, armed with a handgun, a knife, and burglary tools. And he said he came there to kill Justice Kavanaugh because he was enraged by the leaked opinion. Now, of course, you're prosecuting that individual for attempted murder. But did you bring even a single case to enforce this law, or did the Department of Justice decide this law doesn't apply if it's harassing justices for an opinion we don't like? When the Dobbs uh, draft was leaked, I did something no attorney general in the history of the department had ever done before. For the first time in history, I ordered United States Marshals 24-7 to defend every uh, residence of every justice. Well, Garland, as a judge, you're familiar with asking counsel I'm to answer a question. I am answering. Has the Department of Justice enforced this statute? Have you brought a single case against any of these protesters threatening the judgment? Justices under 18 U.S.C. Section 1507. Have you brought even one? Senator, you asked me whether I sat on my hands, and quite of the opposite. I sent hey, 70 me, United States Marshals. Let me try again. To and Have let me you, has the Department of Justice brought even a single case under this statute? It's a yes-no question. It's not a give a speech on the other things you did. The job of the United States Marshals is to defend the lives so of the So the answer is no. It's to defend the lives of the justices 
and that's their number one priority. They have. Why are you unwilling to say no? The answer is no. You know it's no. I know it's no. Everyone in this in this hearing room knows it's no. You're not willing to answer a question. Have you brought a case under this statute? Yes or no? As far as I know, we haven't. And what we have done is defended to the lies of the justices with so how do 70 you decide, U.S. Marshals. How do you decide which criminal statutes the, the DOJ enforces and which one it doesn't? The United States Marshals know that they have full okay, you, I recognize you want to give a separate speech. No, I don't want to how give a How do you decide which statutes you enforce and which ones you don't? But Marshals on scene make that determination in light of the priority of defense. The marshals do not make a determination over whether to prosecute you. The attorney general make a determination, and you spent 20 years as a judge, and you're perfectly content with justices being afraid for their children's lives, and you did nothing to prosecute it. Let's shift that, to another is, area. Can I answer the question? You, no, the, you the cannot. General, you have refused to answer the question. I am question. answering your question. The attorney how did you general choose, does not decide whether to how arrest. How did you choose not to, not to enforce this statute? The marshals on scene. The marshals don't make that decision. They do make the decision of whether to make to an prosecute arrest. prosecute someone? No, they don't. If they make a, uh, if they make marshals an arrest. Marshals do not if, have prosecution. If they authority. make an arrest, right, then it goes to the marshals. Let's change topics because our, our time is limited. We've also seen across the country violent attacks at crisis pregnancy centers by similar left-wing terrorist groups, including one, one graffiti of a, of a firebomb building said, Jane was here. There have been attacks all over the country. And yet, the Department of Justice has not brought these violent criminals to justice. You contrast that. If you're a violent criminal and you attack a crisis pregnancy center, that is not a priority in the Biden Department of Justice. Contrast that to Mark Houck, who's a pro-life activist. He's a sidewalk counselor. And he had an altercation with someone who allegedly inter interfered with his son's personal space and threatened his, his son, and he pushed him. Now, in an ordinary world, pushing someone would be maybe a sim simple misdemeanor assault but not under the Biden Department of Justice. If you're a pro-life activist, what can you expect? Well, in this instance, according to Mr. Houck's wife, two dozen agents clad in body armor and ballistic helmets and shields and a battering ram showed up at his house pointing rifles at his family. Why do you send two dozen agents in body armor to arrest a sidewalk counselor who happens to be pro-life, but you don't devote resources to, count pe to, to prosecute people who are violently firebombing crisis pregnancies. It is a priority of the department to prosecute and investigate and find the people who are doing those firebombings. They are doing it at night and in secret, so, and we have, found two, we have found one group which we did prosecute. You we found are, one. How many have there been? How many attacks? There, there have been, been a lot, and if you have any information specifically as to who those people are, we would be glad, did, we did would be glad to have that. Did you personally authorize 20 agents going to Mr. Houck's house, and he I offered to turn himself in through counsel, but you didn't want that. The Department of Justice wanted to make a show of it. Did you personally authorize it? And do you want to apologize to Mr. Mrs. Houck and her seven children for being terrorized? The decisions about how to do that are made at the level of the uh, FBI agents on scene. Did and you know about it? I did not know about it until uh, the way you're describing it. And my understanding is the FBI disagrees with that description. Was it a Senator's mistake? time has expired. I'm going to allow the witness to respond to any of the questions that were asked. Was it a mistake? I'm going to chair the committee, Senator. I'm sorry you're not. I'm you said you'd allow him to respond. I've repeated the question I asked, which is, was it a mistake to send you, 20 you, agents to arrest him at had, the crack of dawn? You had your time and you more You just said any, you're going to allow him to respond. You just said, I'm going to allow him to respond to the question. So I repeated the question. Was it a mistake? You that was the, the pending question. You want to ask, I'll ask the questions I want That's the ask. question I had already asked. Well. You just said you'd let him respond. I'm going to let him respond right Good. now. Please don't interrupt him. Thank you. The decisions about how to do tactical arrests are made by the FBI agents in the field. Uh, the FBI has uh, publicly stated that it disagrees with the description you gave of what happened in that example. I don't, I, that's the best I can answer. At this point, we're going to go to Senator 